In today's mission, we are going to EVE, the hardest planet to return from. So we did with three Kerbals in one launch. And here we have our liftoff from Kerbal. And with that, hello, hello, and welcome back to a new Kerbal Space Program video on the Spaceship YouTube channel. And since we're going to EVE, well, the Kerbal Ascent is not that interesting. So we're jumping straight to the first stage separation, the booster stage, goodbye, and hello nuclear stage, which is going to circularize and start our first orbit raising maneuver. And with that, we can say that we have started our mission. So our mission, like I said, we are going to the surface of Eve, going to land a surface land there, and bring back the three cables that will disembark and plant a nice flag under the surface of the Venus counterpart in Kerbal Space Program. So, for those who don't know, well, EVE is the hardest and most hostile planet in the entire Kerbal system. It has a thicker atmosphere and higher gravity than Kerbal and pretty much than everything else. The only other thing, body, that has a higher gravi um, gravity and um, atmosphere thickness that is Jewel, how you cannot even land on Jewel, technically speaking, since it's just a gas joint. But anyways, those are details. So, let's talk about um, a bit about the craft. So you can see here our large nuclear engine performing our escape burn from Kerbin straight to EVE, where we have an encounter, straight off the bat actually. And in front of it we can see our entire EVE lander, so the entire construction which will ascend actually from the surface of EVE back up in front of it and behind it you can see a large heat shield but more on that later on. With that we can crossfade immediately straight to EVE where we are actually performing our capture burn. No we're not going to do an air recapture or anything like that. We're using our engines to slow down into a highly eccentric um, orbit around EVE. Well, why are we not going for a error capture? Because I don't want to burn up. And if we're just passing too high through the atmosphere, we're not going to slow down enough. That's pretty much it. And the velocities around EVE, because EVE is so massive, are quite high. So, first of all, now in EVE or around EVE, we're going to detach or actually more de um, undock this small little section in the front. This one small re-entry module and a couple of fuel tanks and engines. This module is going to be our return module. To be more precise, our return module from the uh, from low EVE orbit back to Kerbin and re-entering Kerbin and bringing our crew safely back home. So a very important and integral part of the mission. Kind of the larger part of the craft is going to reduce its periapsis into the upper atmosphere of EVE and we're going to start our deceleration via kind of aero braking. So we're going just only through the upper part of the atmosphere in order to not burn up. And for that, um, and still we do need a heat shield, so that's why we have this 10 meter heat shield in the front and later on for the actual entry to have more stability. Anyways. We're going for multiple aero braking paths since we do have still some delta V left in the nuclear stage as you can see on the readout on the left hand side. Uh, however, this is not enough to get into a circular orbit, like in a 100-100 kilometer orbit around EVE. So that's why we're using the atmosphere, which is actually a large disadvantage and a large problem generally speaking when you're going to EVE and back. So that's why I'm trying to use it to the, well, to the best of my abilities, to use it for our advantages, since since it's already there, might as well go and try the best we can, right? Um, generally speaking, a couple of small inputs before we're going to actually launch from EVE, and I'm going to walk you through the um, EVE launch, so don't you worry, but still I do want to touch upon a few things before we're going down. Um, since otherwise we won't have enough time during the launch since the things there will happen quite quickly. So the idea behind basic EVE, kind of the basic idea of an EVE Ascent vehicle is you obviously need um, something that can get you into EVE orbit. But the hard part of it is EVE has a higher gravity than Kerbin, so you need higher thrust to weight ratio. EVE has a thicker atmosphere than Kerbin, so you really have to pay attention to not exceeding too high accelerations and velocities in order not to lose too much of your um, delta V to um, air resistance. And the other part which most really forget about is the fact that the high pressure reduces the efficiency and the thrust of all of your engines. 
take as an example the vector engine quite solid ish um, efficiency just 300 and a thrust of 1000 at the surface of if you have 700 um, kilonewtons of thrust so that means your all of your engines are running seven uh, set only at 70% thrust and efficiency so this is something you really have to keep in mind so and this is except from the entry this the long kind of the ascent and the entry are the two hardest parts now onto the entry we are going down to Eve as you can see here those small explosions there don't don't worry about them those were just air brakes they burn up everywhere so yeah but no important so as for the entry important to ha having a heat shield because of the high gravity you need the high velocity kind of high orbital velocity around Eve that's why you're actually then when you're going back down to Eve you have very high speeds and the atmosphere is merciless especially once you hit 48 kilometers then you're running into the atmosphere like a bloody brick and this is the most dangerous part of the en um, entry into Eve's atmosphere because here the forces are exceeding 10 G's and most crafts if they survive this they're good to go since this is the point where most crafts start flipping around turning sideways burning up because you're still going at over 2000 meters per second and these speeds boy oh boy they make charcoal out of pretty much everything anyways now we are through the, th the most dangerous part of the entry so we can kind of do a couple of um, small things Deploying our parachutes more well, in the first opening stages just to get a bit more control, slowing slightly down, doing a couple of quick saves. However, we're not reloading at this point actually, so that's pretty pretty good. Moving some battery power because that's something we used up quite a lot. Um, that's what I right clicked there a couple of times. Now with the drogue shoots deploying fully, we have slowed down or we are slowing down to a sufficiently low speed, in my personal opinion, to drop the top heat shield. Dropping heat shields, top and bottom actually, are quite, well, dangerous since they provide a lot of drag and tend to crash into you if you're not deploying them carefully. So this is why we've now wa waited all the way until um, main parachute deployment before dropping the lower heat shield with the help of some SRBs gaining some clearance, getting the heat shield away from the main craft. And like I said, the reason for the waiting until we've deployed the parachute is so that the heat shield, once detached, is not going to crash into the craft and blowing everything apart. This is a very common mistake and things that actually honestly took a few iterations to really get it right. So the amount of um, SRBs, where they're placed and so on and so forth. Now since we're very close to the surface, we can drop the drogue chutes and press F2 to see our beautiful touchdown on the surface of EVE. A couple of explosions left and right as nice decoration. Complete the landing procedure for a good KSP mission. Now, landed successfully on the surface of EVE, we have to obviously um, extend the ladders. Since high gravity, the Kubels cannot use the jetpack to get back into the craft. But before we disembark, we still have to do one more thing. Small side note, keep in mind the heat shield on the right hand side. So we're dropping this small adapted part with SRBs and at the same time as they crash into the surface, the heat shield on the right as well crash. Kind of funny coincidence there, right? And with that we can take our first Kubel out, to be more precise, our engineer, who is going to put on a small little nose cone on the top in order to reduce the drag during the ascent. However, please keep in mind, have a look at this nose cone for later on actually. Anyways, now we can um, take out all of our three boarded Kerbals. Well, we have a nice ladder construction, but they kind of dislike it. At least when going down. So we're just jumping down. Um, Kerbals are quite sturdy when it comes to full damage. I mean, there were already occasions where you drop the Kerbal from 20 kilometers of altitude. And the Kerbal said, ah, I'm fine. And that was before the addition of the parachutes. Just keep that in mind. Anyways, doing nice surface science, reporting, uh, crew report, surface sample, um, having a look at the purple dust everywhere, and back into the craft. The high pressures and high heat on Venus are not really something Kerbals like, or at least these Kerbals don't like it. The other Kerbals that went to the um, Sister Planet expedition, you can see that on the channel in the Sister Planet playlist, 
um, they really liked Eve. They stayed there for quite a while. So if you like Eve and want to see more of Eve, check out this m small mini series. Now, fast forwarding to the launch. We're launching at night because of the in orbit craft. So that's just in order to get into the same inclination. Anyways, dropping the ladders, activating SAS, radially out, and full thrust off we go. And as you can see on the top um, top left corner, one times regular speed, just to keep that in mind. Now we're dropping these first fuel tanks pretty much immediately, a couple of seconds into the flight. Their original purpose was just as backup fuel for when we're coming down and landing. If I can f um, a attempt to blow up on touchdown, um, I can reload and use a small amount of thrust and fuel to slow down the kind of the impact. But we weren't. It wasn't necessary, so we still have pretty much full fuel tanks, and this is obviously good for us now. On the sand, we get a couple of meters more of Delta V. Next up, we're dropping two of our boosters. Really good vector, uh, yeah, vect vector boosters with 1,000 e um, kilometers of thrust each. After that, pretty much immediately to get some weight off, um, four of our aerospike engines. Aerospikes are rather good engines, small profile good um, ISP throughout all of the atmospheric pressures and quite high thrust in comparison at least but still they were not enough producing not that much thrust and their fuel tanks were pretty much empty so that's why they were kind of the next stage now we are here in the with the four main towers as I like to call them which are staged separately so first two go of them as you can see here around six kilometers and now we're down to two main stage uh, main towers we're going now through the cloud layer at around 8 to 10 kilometers, kind of more or less the part where we are still below Kuban's atmosphere. And around 10 kilometers, we're dropping them. And now it is more or less like an Eve, uh, like a KSP, uh, Kuban ascent. We're starting to pitch slightly to the right hand side in order to gain some re um, lateral velocity, but I decided to go back and only start doing it at around 20 kilometers. Keep in mind, we kind of have to think about it as if 10 kilometers is sea level so that's why 10 kil um, 20 kilometers starting your gravity turn well it's not a perfect gravity turn I'm going to be honest i have not that many um if as ascent missions behind me on the mobile to really get a good profile but this worked this time and last time as well pretty solid pretty good so around um 20 25 kilometers starting your gravity turn works quite well now, apart from that, once we are subordinate of trajectory, only flat and um, horizontal acceleration until we get into an orbit. Now we are on the last stage, just a small stage, with quite a solid amount of um, delta V, quite, quite, um, just barely, well not barely, but enough to get us into an orbit and we can start planning our rendezvous. And here I said, keep in mind the nose cone. Where was the nose cone? Because of, well, I'm going to be honest, it took me three attempts to get into orbit. Um, between the reloads, the nose can just disappeared. Well, nothing can be said and done against that. So just keep in mind that then the um, ascent was actually less efficient than it was in theory, since we had a lot more drag. Anyways, now we can see the small little um, return craft doing some um, slow down burns, deceleration burns to reduce our apapsis height. Um, with the help of the upper atmosphere until our heat shield actually that we had on it ran out of ablator after that we're just using engine power to get a small um well small to get a simple encounter here and rendezvous and with that actually by the way with the help of the atmosphere we were able to save another 300 meters of delta v that's also pretty solid um in the end we have had a thing four five six hundred ish meters per second of delta v left so it was not necessary but like i said already um if you can use the atmosphere of eve to your advantage and save some fuel go for it i mean it's free and i mean you should take free things right okay so um as for the rendezvous and docking pretty solid small simple craft stocking is a piece of cake and just a small side note if you are not capable of doing rendezvous and docking, you shouldn't attempt an EVE mission. Because an EVE direct mission, that's hard. I, haven't eaten, I never did that. So, keep in mind having those skills is important before going out for EVE. If you need a refresher, there is a, um, EVE, uh, if there is a rendezvous tutorial on my channel as well. It's called, I think, KSP 101 Part 2. Rendezvous. 
something like that. It's quite an old video, but still quite solid, so that's why I decided to never go for a remake. Anyhow, after we have planned a maneuver now to go back to Kuban and direct home and transfer, we can drop the ascent stage. Um, kind of, we don't have to take with us. In theory, could have deorbited it, but I just honestly, I just couldn't be bothered at this point in time since Eve missions do take a lot, quite a long time, and in the beginning the frame rate was quite low, so I wanted to go back home to Kerbin. <laughs> so speaking of Kerbin, we had an encounter straight off the bat, however one small correction burn during mid-course, mid kind of in interplanetary space to gain a close approach, uh, uh, a close approach, a very close periapsis at four, um, around 45 kilometers, like I already established in previous videos, 45 kilometers is my personal um, preferred altitude for entering Kerbin. And with that, we are through Kerbin's atmosphere, piece of cake for this re-entry module, and the mission is a perfect success. I hope you have enjoyed today's KSP video and this EVE mission, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Spaceship, signing out.